this is our entire $100 survival kit. Now, if you wanna see us actually take this out into the field for the next seven to 10 days, definitely make sure that we get at least 3,000 likes on this video, because that's gonna let us know that this is definitely an adventure that you wanna see. So without wasting any more time, let's break down the entire contents of my kit. So getting started, we're just gonna move left to right. Now, right here, this is probably gonna be one of the most important and vital things because if I don't catch any food while I'm out here, it's gonna be super vital that I have clean drinking water that will sustain me for the seven to 10 days for this survival trip, for this $100 survival kit. This is the Aquamira Frontier Straw. This is a very famous, very cheap, very budget friendly, very, very easy to do. And if you are curious as to how I'm gonna be carrying and painting a lot of my water, I'm, I'm going to be utilizing this big, huge pot that you guys see right here. This is a huge cook pot. I believe this is a 8 to 10 quart pot. I'll flash that across the screen so you can see it. It's got a glass lid on it. Same kind of ones you would use for the kitchen. The only things I'm worried about are these kind of like uh, plastic kind of polymer handles. But typically, um, we just have to keep those away from the fire, cook them on the coals, no direct flames. We should be okay. In addition to that, to make sure I have more water to carry with me. We have freezer bags. Not exactly a high end or one of those big huge carrier systems from something like uh, Hydro Blue or anything like that. But I think being able to take like one or two of these at a time out into the field and using these to carry water I think are gonna be very, very beneficial for us. We have a couple gallons on us at a time. Fill this up at a creek or a river or a water source to make sure we can have this taken care of. Now that we've locked down how I'm going to cook, well, the big question is how am I gonna procure food? Um, well, if you're looking at this kit, there's not a whole lot of things. There's not a lot of fishing gear and a lot of different hunting and tool implements here. And the point behind that is for me to take all of the primitive skills that I've learned for like trap building, um, making primitive fishing lines, fishing nets, and trying to take that and put that in practical applications. So it's gonna be very, very challenging and time consuming, but I think if I'm gonna push myself forward as an outdoorsman, that's gonna be the only way to do it. However, I did wanna make sure that I had some something out there. Uh, this does come with a 100 pack of ammo, but I'm also gonna probably be relying on things like rocks. This does have a really good strong band on it. This should be able to help me catch some small things like rabbits or other critters. So I'll be really excited to see if I can actually catch something with this. Um, like I said, if you guys wanna see that, definitely make sure you throw a huge like and a comment and share this out if you wanna see us punish ourselves for seven to 10 days out into the woods. I would say outside of food and water, fire. Fire makes everything happen to be able to boil water and get all that stuff done. Now this is not the best fire steel in the world, but the UST Spark Force has proven itself as a budget rock star for something that's only like five to six bucks. These things work really, really well. It's gonna have a good scraper on there. And I think the most important thing with in combination with my cordage is I'm gonna have to go ahead and take this stuff out and kind of disassemble it and have some predefined tinder bundles uh, kind of pre-fluffed up and ready to go so I can fluff up my jute and have something to when I strike the tinder, I have something that'll be very flammable and accessible to actually take care of everything because I don't have a full on super big kit that has a whole bunch of fancy smanchy extras. This is pretty bare bones and that's why it will be considered a challenge because for someone like me, I'm just trying to take my skill set and force myself to take it to the next level for food procurement and surviving out in the woods for a little over a week. So that's where this challenge coming in. It's, it's not ideal. I know some people would throw in things like fishing lines and all that other stuff. But um, it's like I said, it's gonna be a lot of fun to kind of cover some of the basics, but really push myself really, really hard. This is the Corona machete. Now, I love the Corona razor tooth folding saw. It's like a $19 folding saw. It's one of my absolute favorites, but I figured if I need, if I can only keep one implement, keep it lightweight, what do I do? Well, I wanted a machete. So I figured I'd just get a really, really, really big one. I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm probably gonna go and put the throw this on my work sharp. Go ahead and sharpen this up in the field beforehand to make sure everything's good to go. But it's nice and lightweight. We do have a 90 degree spine. So if I need to uh, scrape some bark or get some, uh, like if we run into some cedar or anything, I need to grab some more fire tender or whatever like that. Should be good to go. 
and there is a method where you can take this and actually use this to skin and process any game we might come across or process any food. This is not gonna be ideal. I would like to have a small knife with me, but like I said, part of this is challenge is kind of limiting my tools and my weight and my options to force me to make the best of the situation that I'm given. So having any tool at all is gonna be better than none. So it won't be glorious, but it'll be something. Then the final tool that I brought is the Fiskars folding saw. You can find this in the hardware section of stores, but this was much cheaper than the Corona razor tooth folding saw. We have used really, really cheap stuff. As you guys remember who followed our Walmart seven day $100 Walmart survival challenge, we had a really cheap folding saw and it still did the trick. It was not as good as the Silky, but it still held its own. We have very, very high hopes for the Fiskars that's gonna be able to hold its own and do what it's gotta do. Cat Caterpillar makes some really good gloves. These are nice and tough. They're gonna take a little bit to get used to. I might wear them off and on and do some yard work beforehand just to kind of get my hands and my gloves used to just being worked on. But they have pretty good stitching. They uh, don't seem very just cheap at all. They have some nice double stitching on there. I know a lot of my buddies who actually work in uh, construction and welding and uh, different trades where they have to wear gloves and this is one of the go-to's that are in their kit so I felt pretty confident rocking that so I got myself a metal cup from Coleman this is just a 12 ounce mug it's nothing special I can't really keep it over a fire or anything because we'll remove the enamel coating on there I don't want to like poison myself or anything but it'll give me something to kind of give me a little bit of humanity for the week I'm out there I think the most important thing is to cover is shelter shelter is gonna be pretty basic like I said, I'm gonna have, I have 300 feet of jute. That's it, that's all I get. 300 feet sounds like a lot. But uh, just kind of like, like, like ammunition for self-defense, things like cordage go through really, really quickly, especially when you're doing a build task. If I could decide to build a bigger, badder, cooler shelter and start building furniture and try to make a campsite of somewhere, I could go through this really fast, quick, and in a hurry. For the shelter, we have an eight foot by 10 foot tarp. It is coated on one side. And on the very, very ends, we're gonna go through, as we open this up, the one thing that gave me some hope is there are some reinforced grommets on here. So hopefully that will help me out and put this thing down. As you guys see, I don't have things like extra cordage or tent stakes. That's because I'm gonna have to go out of my way, use that big old goofy looking machete and actually have to make natural tent stakes. Like I said, this whole thing is designed to be a challenge for myself just to push myself a little bit farther as an endorsement. Just fine, I think, as long as we don't run into some crazy insane weather. Uh, would it work in a really super cold climate? Probably not. But in a warm or temperate climate, we should be just fine. But on any freak nights that we might have, if we have a cold front running through while I'm out for the week, I wanted to make sure that I have either a ground cover way to keep my body core temperature warm. Let's say if you know something happens, I get sick, I need to keep myself protected away from the elements. I did make sure that I brought myself a wool blanket. One, wool is naturally fire resistant, but it is amazing at keeping you dry, cool, warm, whatever you need. It will take care of business. So we went ahead and got this bad boy and it feels Really, really, really soft. Last but not least is my super high quality Maxpedition backpack that I've got. Um, it's their new line called Trailmaker. Just kidding, it's not Maxpedition. They had nothing to do with this. They're probably gonna shake their head and go, shut up Chris, stop talking. But uh, yeah, this is Trailmaker. These are really super cheap backpacks. You can, you can actually find these at places like the Dollar Store and Dollar General. This is a brand, you can find them at Walmart. Um, so the fact that I had them on Amazon was pretty nice, but this is super basic. It's got, but what got me interested, yeah, we have bungee line right here, which I think I could use because I still have the zipper tabs. So I might be able to use this to do some types of um, shelter help, which is gonna be super nice. I'm super excited to see how that works out. It is not the best kit in the world, but it'll give me some basics. And these are, and that's kind of the whole point of the challenge is to force myself to not use all of the modern amenities that I'm used to, not having a knife, not having a bigger knife, not having a bow, not having this, 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 and this, and this. It's designed to take all of the gear that I have and use it to make more things 
to help improve my situation. But like I said, at the end of this video, if you guys like this kit, if you want to see us take this out into the woods for seven to 10 days, definitely throw this video a big thumbs up and share this out because if we get 3,000 likes, we will make sure we make that particular series for you guys and air that here on YouTube. But we wanna make sure that we have sincere, amazing interest for something as hardcore as this. But that just about us for now. Hope you guys have an absolute wonderful day. I'm out.